Finally, we're live. Are we? Man, I had to bum rush over here. Um, sorry for the delay. Of course, the Estellas guys are with me. And um, my name is Chad Andrews. I'm going to be hosting the show today. And um, I just got done with the Collegiate National Rewards. And I was way across campus. And I just screamed over here. And, of course, these knuckleheads that I'm getting ready to introduce to you guys, the, um, the Estellas Pro Cycling Team. Guys, say hey. We've been working on their audio, so we're just going to have to roll with it. Apologies for the headset. Heads All right, so who wants to introduce themselves first? I'll, Aldo, I'll tell you what. Since you're the tallest, let's go with you. No, Me? Right. I'm Aldo Ilizic, or Ilicic, in Slovenian. From Slovenia, obviously. Hey. I'm Next. I'm Effort from Tasmania, Australia. I'm Brandon Fury from Chicago. Ian Keough from Boston, Massachusetts. Ryan Hitchson from uh, Kitchener, Canada. All right, so I've got to ask the question. What happened Mr. today? is from Uncle Uji's <laughs> in Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, okay, so what happened today? What happened today? Oh, I know what happened. You guys tell me. Well, we did a race. Yeah. Did you win? No. Uh, Sensi uh, I'm sensitive right now. Okay, suck it up, <laughs> Clay. What happened? Um, it was pretty aggressive early. Uh, we covered a few moves, and then UHC got up the road with an individual rider, and we chased. I think brought it back, and then it just got chaotic. The wind came in and blew all the barriers over, and the storm was rolling in. <clears throat> Big group of maybe twenty split the field, and then uh, from there we just started attacking and I got up the road with Brad White, Mike Stoop and another guy who won the time trial the day before. Super strong. Um, and we got a gap immediately um, and I actually crashed a bit earlier and I was pretty banged up and sore so I wasn't through with the situation but um, you just got to go with it. And then we just kept rolling it and the guys patrolled the group and then with maybe seven laps to go the storm finally hit us and it started raining. Um, the guy crashed out of the break, he got back in, and then with two to go, Brad hit us and just rode away, and then we just sprinted in, and I got third. So but then we got fifth, seventh, seventh, seventh. 13th. 13th, and 23rd. So overall, it was a good day considering the craziness of it all. All right, well, let me ask, would you trade a 1,000 third, fifth, seventh, and ninth, and 15th for a win? Yes. Oh, of course. In RB. Yeah. In a heartbeat. All right, so what do we eat? What's the food food of choice tonight? You know, when there are four people up the road, it's always a gamble, you know? And the race was so aggressive. Like, more or less, you had seen us. We're like, we saw what we might let go off the road. Like, it, it was impossible to let two UHC guys and one guy from us, one guy from us, or the other way around, which just, just wasn't happening. Right. So at some point, the situation was right. And we set up a little bit in the back. They got a big gap. And that's what we rolled with, you know? Yeah, I heard the weather was shit. I mean, it was windy. I mean, it was windy here in the Carolinas for the Collegiate National Championship. I mean, there was stuff blowing everywhere. And then I saw a tweet after we were done with the racing, and I was heading home, and some of the berries were blown over. And, Clay, you mentioned that, that the weather had just gotten so tough. I mean, did that change the dynamics of the race today? Well, it was pretty bad from the beginning, to be honest. Like, it was really windy. And we knew it was going to come in, but then all of a sudden, like a big gust of wind came in and threw the barriers. And then everyone starts getting a bit antsy when they know it's about to start raining. So um, I think everyone was kind of happy the break went because it was really hard. And then you could see the rain was threatening for maybe even 10 laps before that. So you could see everyone was pretty edgy. Um, so, yeah, it definitely changed it. Okay, so... <laughs> I guess we're going to go flash back to a week ago here in just a minute. Um, I'm sure it's probably the crowning jewel of you guys' race season so far. Um, team plan or was it just, I mean, what the hell? Let's just throw everything, you know, probably what kind of pizza you guys are eating, like a Supreme with everything thrown in. Was it kind of that kind of deal with the weather or was it just kind of the way that you guys set it up that, Clay, you were going to be there at the right time? No, nah, not at all. It wasn't. It was. There, was, there was a lot of field splits today, like just a lot of, all of a sudden there'd be five guys up the road or like there was 
moments where there was like 20 up the road and everything just split up because of the wind. Right when the wind started hitting, everyone just it caused a big panic. And I think we had a time we had four guys in a group of 20 and uh, it just, we just kept attacking each other. But that it, that rolled for a while that probably lasted. It was obvious that the break's going to go, but nobody could say who's going to go. Yeah. You know? Right. It was just I uh, so those are, was right and that's it right i tell you one cool thing that a lot of you guys that are out there that are watching this show one badass kind of concept that um that uh that aldo has on his bike it's a live stream of the race going on and man, you get some perspectives that you never get to see in professional cycling and in that scenario um aldo did it did it stay on the whole race because i think i checked in about halfway through and it seemed like was it working the whole race or no Honestly, I don't know. Like the the lights that should be blinking have been blinking the whole race, so I don't know. I'll, I'll see later. It's still uploading now because I think the file is like three or four gigs big, so you can you can rewatch the whole race. But you know, we're trying. Like that's that's what we that's what I wanted to do last year already. Now we're like getting into it. I have now about two weeks of time to like actually make it work. I know that some people are bummed and they're like, oh, the live stream's down, live stream's down. But we're operating here with $500 of equipment. You know, we don't have to budget of 10, 15 grand. If I would have that, we would have live stream already last year, full gas. So if there's somebody out there who wants to, who wants to chip in for that, I know how to do it. I just, you know. Right. But we, we tried to also make it work in a different way like you know with a lower budget so that more people can actually do it so it becomes something that's like owned by the field of racers not so much by one individual just getting all the all the credit for it you know once once that's figured out it might be really might be really interesting because crit racing you know like there's no fancy buses and stuff like why <laughs> that's why we don't have any fancy equipment but it's more accessible to everyone so everyone can do it and that's what makes it more interesting Right. For those of you guys that are listening, apologies. Um, I'm at the behest of of this college where everything seems to turn on. Pizza. Um, we didn't know if we were going to have a Let's show. See. What are you guys Let's eating see. over there? What kind of pizza is that? Let's see if we can do four pizzas while we talk. We got a pizza preem? <laughs> oh, this is, uh, what is this? Hawaiian. We got the Hawaiian. Yeah, we just killed the barbecue chicken. The barbecue chicken. You guys know that eating's cheating, right? Well, that's what I heard many, many times, but... But you, you guys are crit racers, so go ahead and eat what you want. Just roll over everybody. Hey, I think we showed it works, right? <laughs> huh? I'm, hey, look, I'm, you're not you're not getting any arguments from this guy. I've seen it firsthand. Just... None. All right, let's um let's flash back to last weekend. Uh, this weekend, solid result from you guys, but uh, last weekend was the the big one, I think, uh, at Athens Twilight. Uh, they're calling. I mean, I think I've commented that race probably. 13 or 14 years straight and um ryan congratulations on getting your big self a big win uh kind of flashback for us if you don't mind last weekend uh yeah like it was definitely the biggest win in my career um i was shooting for the podium many like lots last year i got lots of third, seconds and thirds but finally like i took the win like with with this squad like which means which is amazing for us we were so happy to to finally uh kind of to, to win twilight like it took uh it took a while for it to kind of register in at least for me but uh we we played everything to a t like i had i had more than one rider like available to help me out when whenever i needed it and i've always been good at uh kind of catching the brakes and to be able to make like the two major moves in a race like that's 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 really good and like that that's really unheard of uh, in crit racing, especially like lapping the field twice. And so, I always had somebody by my side helping me out. If not one one rider, Iman and Aldo in the two breaks, uh, the whole team once uh, once the we went around. It, how many years have you done the Twilight? That was my second year. I did uh, the old. I did the new course last year. Was the first time. So you've never done the previous course? I've never done the previous course, no. Did... <laughs> I got a different perspective on the race. Say it again? I, my, my perspective on the race is uh, completely different than what, uh, what like, a more uh, older rider would think. And so last year I was able to make the break, too. 
And what was the, the rest of you guys? Um, Ian, did you, I know Theory, you and Ian, did you guys both race it? I'm, all the races are kind of jumbled up in my head from last week. Uh, yeah. um, I actually was, uh, I, I ended up pulling out probably about just over halfway through. Um, I was kind of like battling sickness. And uh, unfortunately, I was just, had really bad congestion, was, didn't have a leg. So ended up pulling out just to kind of recover for the week. Um, getting sick, everyone's, it's going around. So kind of. Yeah, that's what I heard. The, some the nasty stuff going around. Whoever was watching, <laughs> Everybody. He was shooting fireworks in Spartanburg. <laughs> I made him in the race. If you know what I mean. Elaborate. So that didn't help. That didn't help. That didn't help. at all. But. Oh, I got my English cup here. <laughs> in terms of the race course, though, I've done it on the old course, the right hand turns. And we won it with Luke in 2012, but this new course is way harder. Yeah. Way harder. Like, I'm going to be honest. I couldn't make the break in the, the like when they lapped because it was too hard for me. Oh, big boy. That's like but, uphill only. But you took a lap up, so. Yeah, but after it was like slower. I couldn't hold it. Like, it was too fast for me in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I heard you say that. And I was like, what? Come on. That doesn't sound like you. But yeah, you were like, this is your typical Aldo sign where it's like, you know, I was gassed. Um, so what, how, why, how did th things change? You just, your legs finally just went, I got it. But we had two guys up the road, you know, so that's good. At one point you guys had four of you in that final selection of 30, I think. No, maybe I don't know. Was it four or five? I think we had, we had five, five guys were leading me out when we started. So now the goal, you've won Athens, you guys have podium. Um, in a big race today, uh, what's tomorrow, next week, the final weeks leading for the, I mean, let's do short term. Let's do this week and next week. Uh, we're actually, uh, we're, we're all heading home. We're all, we have a weekend off next week. So, uh, we're, uh, we're taking a little break and maybe kind of a little rest and back to training and back to motor pacing. So we're, we're all flying out or driving home, uh, come tomorrow morning. Yep. Back to Canada, eh? Sorry? Back to Canada, eh? I'm going back to Canada, eh? Hey, <laughs> Clay, are you going back to Tasmania? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to Knoxville, but um, I'm hoping Trump doesn't put the wall up between Canada. It could be, we need him. Uh, I'll, stay in the, I'll stay in the States. Yeah, for Athens. <laughs> but All right, uh, so. the following weekend's Winston-Salem, so that's a big ah. Definitely no more Canadians in Athens for a few years. They have to recover from that. <laughs> I know. The, kid, so the, kids, the big kids are off. The Canadian invasion was down there in Athens. All right, let me ask you this. Ian. Yes. Who has got the weirdest pre-race process? That's a good question. Oh. Let me think about that one. And not, and not only do you have to tell me who it is, you have to tell us what it is. Oh, like pre our pre, our pre race process? No, yeah, who, who has the weirdest pre race routine? It's his question. You want to know what we actually do? It's his, it's his question. You're serious? I'm asking a damn question for a reason. <laughs> Nothing. I would say Iman probably has the, the strangest, not necessarily strange, just the strangest between us. Because he's the only one that actually does anything before race. Yeah, right. He, he just listens to music and gets pumped up, he does a lot of dancing. This personal uh, dancing doesn't involve us. He doesn't even involve you guys. That is so wrong. <laughs> it's very it's a, kind of it's a weird. nervous energy. Yeah, yeah it's a weird energy. like the, personal space. The dance. only thing we actually do like that everybody's okay with is like just like music. We always travel with a speaker or two. That's it. But Iman for for Speed Week, he what we always hopped in the van and drove to oh, the yeah. race. Yep. But like he he wanted to like he liked being in his own like kind personal. of his own personal space at the start of some races with his headphones kind of 
just sitting in his chair. But for two of the races, he rode by himself for 30 minutes uh, to the race. And we just hopped in the van and drove. And I think he was listening to Miley Cyrus. Yeah, he likes, he likes Miley I Cyrus. <laughs> you guys know this is going to be in the archives for, the all, for all time. Not necessarily like a weird free race thing, but between us, that's kind of the strangest thing because we all just kind of do our own. We just we, we just kind of hang out. Yeah, we pretty just, much all have the same pre-race routine. Uh, we get to the race, uh, usually have a coffee an hour and a half, two hours before the race. Just sit, chill, listen to music, and then I'll start getting ready half hour before the race and pretty much roll the start line all together. Have a quick meeting and that's it. No yeah. warm-up. No warm-up. <laughs> and no warm-up. <laughs> that's important. So All he has never that warming up. From the past week. Yeah. <laughs> we just got a tweet in from Ben Renkema, who I think you guys got sick last week. He said, uh, quote, Aldo, that live feed today on your bike was honestly the best I've ever watched. I could hear everything you said. Was it half in Slovenia and then oh, half? <laughs> he got mad at us a couple of times. We dropped the ball early on. And... He might have yes. a the look on him. Yeah, I think I think might be interesting to do next one one on my face. <laughs> yeah. No, this is the, my favorite one of you all. Though this one. I got to see it front and center. What the hell is everybody? Well, all right, so I do that. We don't want to see the finger. <laughs> They're like, oh boy, <laughs> it's, it's always a, he's always just pointing. <laughs> The best thing about right, that is uh, when Aldo does it, we just go full gas. We know, <laughs> we, know, we know what to do, but when he does it, we know I uh, better go full yeah. gas or we're, we're in trouble. Oh, all right, so last question, and then I'll let you guys get to your pizza. And it, it, before I get to the last question, he has promised me one thing tonight. Oh. After we're done, don't talk about any more damn bike racing for the evening. That's no, no bike that's race. Very hard. That's easy. The only reason why we're talking bike racing is because of this thing now. <laughs> this thing? <laughs> this thing. Well, this is going to be really big someday. I just want to let you know that. Absolutely. So last question. Who would you, out of the, out of the team, who would you not want dating your sister? What? Oh, what? Who would you I... not want dating your sister? <laughs> I don't have a sister. Yeah, I don't well, know. that eliminates all of it. It's a figure of speech, Aldo. I, I'm kidding. I don't want anybody to answer that question. <laughs> but all of you look around like, hmm, hmm, hmm. the next two months, you guys are going to be going, I don't want that guy dating my sister. I think, I think you have to ask Ethan. I've got sisters. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, but Ian's got to fight ten brothers. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're all pretty nice guys. and But the... One I wouldn't like dating my sister's probably all though. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Just watch your hand with that one. <laughs> all right, guys, anything before I let you go? Well, how was Collegiate Nats? Huh? How was Collegiate Nationals? Oh, it's great. I mean, these kids, I mean, at no race that I can ever remember for the past two years do I ever remember them doing a presentation before the podium about who is a 3.9 in molecular chemistry, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, is a cat too. And oh, by the way, I'm just sitting there going, man, these are some smart, intelligent, really cool kids. Um, Nolan Tankersley just, there's four or five riders that just cleaned up. Nice. Surely you got more questions for us, Chad. We rushed to the hotel. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have a question for me. Oh, you asked it. You asked. All right. Um, what road race are you guys focused on? Or road one? race? Road race? Is that a four letter word? <laughs> hey, road race. We don't do that until unless it's in some kind of like mix. In, I think in yeah. Some crits. I think there's a, a couple road races in uh, Tour of America's Dairyland and Prairie State, but that's the only ones on our calendar. Like a six kilometer circuit race. That's a road race. It's a, a, that's a road race. <laughs> It's a glorified crit. All right, I got a question for Aldo. Um, tell us the difference. Uh, when you first came to the States, you were winning some crits, and then you went back to um, Slovenia. You got picked up by some Conti teams, and then you raced um, some like Turkey, the Mokras, a bunch of races. 
why the switch now? Why did you finally come to your sense? Not <laughs> sorry, yeah. I come to your senses and go, thought, mm, I'm a pretty good crit racer. Back then, I, I still thought I wanted the road races, you know, and I got back. I saw what's going on. Uh, that's not me, you know, I can't be <coughs> on the bike for five, six hours. It doesn't work. I can be super focused for like 90 minutes or two hours, but then I have to do something else and I can be focused again, but not the same thing. Plus for me, being big and heavy, like I always miss the action at the end, you know, because the only reason why I race bikes is because of the sprinting out and turning and all that stuff. And that doesn't really happen often in, in the road races. I mean, you have turns and everything, but it's nothing to compare to this. Uh, Ryan, is there a stigma between road racers and crit racers. Like some road racers say, I'll never do a crit. And then the crit racers look at the road racer like, really? And then the road racer looks back at the crit racer like, you guys aren't really racing. And I, I uh, like, what are your thoughts about that? I feel like there's on, on the bike, once anyone's on that start line, like everyone's pretty devoted to like, to do their best and to like and, and to, to finish well but off the bike i think there's a personality difference like between road racers and crit racers and like for us like we're like we've just got off speed week so like twilight races and so we're we're having beers at one o'clock celebrating a win and but we're racing the next day um and eating pizza in, in some cases like that's that's normal for us. And we still, we love doing that or performing the next day, but a road racer, their mentality of uh, like their different pre-race rituals and like making sure they're in bed at the right hour to get all the, all the sleep needed to perform like to what they think is their best ability. Like that's, I think that's the main difference where we were the crit guys were just maybe a little more relaxed, but really focus when it comes time to work. Good insight. Clay, I'm going to rifle you guys with questions. Um, Clay, if you're starting a team, are you starting a crit team or are you starting a road race team? What was that? Is that the name? Yeah. yeah. Crit team. Why? And can't answer it because I like crits. There's got to be something more deep than that. I think, for me, the crits in the States are – the best crit scene in the world. Like it's very underrated and overshadowed by the four big California, Utah, and these races. And people forget about the crits, and it's even Americans forget that it, it's a legacy that they should grab and run with because no other country in the world has this crit like background and prestige and all that sort of stuff. And, and I, I want that to keep growing because it's so much fun. It's good for the crowd, good for the sponsors. It's good prize money. So, and, and as for riders, when the salaries aren't that high, prize money is a must. The road prize money is pretty low compared to the crits. So, and to, to go back on what Clay was saying, a lot of people look down on on crits because, say, the Belgians or Europeans don't do crits. Well, why don't the Belgians do crits? Well, I don't know. But everyone seems to think that whatever the Belgians are doing, we have to do. But we are crits. That's our thing. And we're really good at it. So we should keep that going. We definitely need to well, it's, keep it's, that going. People, people look down on it. It's kind of disappointing that everyone's like, oh, crit racing is not, not real. But it's definitely awesome. And it's definitely fast. It's definitely real racing. It's like what, what Aldo said, too. Like, he, he likes to finish. Like, he likes the, the finishing and the t and the – the cornering and the uh, and the, the sprints that you find in crits, and we get to do that for mid race creams. Uh, for the like, we get to work on like as a team our lead outs multiple times a week when it comes to crit racing, and we get to visit all the major cities in the U.S. and in most cases race downtown. Sponsorship opportunity there like should be immense, like because we're we're a traveling. American we're race circus. Team. Yeah, we're we're a traveling American circus who like. What the hell does that make me? <laughs> Sorry. 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 Yeah. But we we go to all the major cities. Like it's. I feel like sponsorship. Uh, they're not using crits to their advantage when 
we were all over the place rather than a few key uh, PRT races in, in uh, like kind of at certain sections in, in, in North America. Hmm. I totally think a total separation should happen. It's a different sport. But, but we tried that. And that failed miserably. It's true. It did. It did fail pretty miserably. Yeah, because the same people were putting on the road races and crits. Yeah, but I mean, all the, there's only a handful of promoters throughout the country that can actually have the, have the time and the energy to be able to put on, like an Athens or like a Charlotte or like a Wilmington or you know, any of these other ones that are coming up. Well, we'll definitely try to put in some new breeze in that whole thing. So we'll see what happens. Well, again, like to get a live stream, like Aldo doing the on-bike streaming, like the amount of views he's gotten from that, and we haven't even gotten 100% yet or anywhere. Like we're trying to get it to 100%. But he's, it's a 90-minute race. Lots of people are tuning in because they want to see What's us perform in, in a 90-minute intense uh, like crit race where like anything can happen. And so like just – I. I Sponsorship, for some reason, isn't like they're going away to the road racing side of things. But like we we see the value in crit racing, and there's it's surprising how little people like have the same thoughts yeah, and feelings that, that we do. Why would what would you tell a young kid that's growing up? You know, how would, what would you say to them? Say, all right, little Johnny, forget football because you could get hurt, or forget baseball because it's slow as molasses, or forget basketball because you can't jump out. Enough. What would you tell? Them? That's ten years old. Awesome. What's that? Well, like, you don't want to guide a young kid like telling him what to do. You know, everyone has to figure out for himself. But if little Johnny wants to try, he should at least try. At least try. You know. Yeah, do what you love. Yeah, but I mean, I, I get that. But how many of these kids just aren't even introduced to the sport because like, a the cost, b the time, c there's so many. You know. Not existing. Yeah, we're on a two completely different page in the crit racing, though. That's just this is just like uh, uh, educating children. Say, crit racing is definitely more accessible to as a family atmosphere. You're not going to send a little Johnny out to do a six hour road race because there's no junior or there's no ten to ten, 10 to twelve. We need to six hour road race. We need to send little Johnny to the local velodrome. That's the best way for kids to start racing. Hmm. You guys ready to start a junior team then? Hey, what's that? <laughs> you guys ready to start a junior team? Oh, nah, junior that's too early. Overrated. That's too early. <laughs> Only if little Johnny's available. We can't even control our sales for now. How should we control like younger kids? Well, I mean, I have to say that when you guys said that you were going to be eating pizza, sitting on the bed talking bike race, bike racing, I was going to call you out because I knew that you guys weren't going to do it, but. Chapeau to you guys. You did. It's a diabetic liquid juice. To get We're going to go get ice cream after this and maybe go to the bar. So, Question, question for you then, chatty boy. Uh -huh. Oh, bring it. Clay. Which is your favorite race to announce and who is the most exciting racer to watch and announce in, the Mer in their crit series? Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, ask that again. It's a two-parter. <laughs> Favorite race to announce. Oh my god. Come on. Um there's one race that I do love to call. Um and, and the reason why I'm gonna say that is because Gene helped me, you know, get my start 15 years ago. Um I was new. I mean I was green as hell. I mean, more green than I am right now as far as race commentary goes. And Gene Dixon heard me at a race in the middle of nowhere. And then Ray was in Charlotte. And I picked up the microphone. He said, you're raw, but, you, you know, you can, we can work with you or whatever. And next thing I know, he calls me up like a week later and says, I need you to come down and do Athens. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm not doing that. You know, that was with the silly Davidenko and the whole Navigators thing. And it was, yeah, it was a pretty legit thing. And I kind of made my way through that, but. Athens is dear, Charlotte's dear. I love doing national championships. And, and let me take a step back and answer that question two part. I love doing crits. You know, fortunately, unfortunately, I've been, been called the crit commentator, which is, you know, that's how I got my teeth cut. 
but I do love doing road racing because it gives me a chance to set up the race. Like in crit, I don't have a jack shit worth of time to be able to, I, I can't set it up. So here they come, there they go. So I think crit racing has made me a better um, stream commentator and a better road race commentator because I can stop, I can pause, I can think, okay, well, they're not going to come back for another hour, which is good and bad in its own right. But more importantly, you know, the national championships are great. Um, you know, Utah, Colorado, Cal- I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're asking me for my first race, it's one of my first hardest ones that I've ever done, and that was obviously Athens. So, I mean, I, I mean, my hometown race of Charlotte's great just because, you know, I don't know if you got you guys weren't racing at the time, but the first year was one hundred twenty five thousand dollars for the winner. I mean, but yeah, no, the post was twenty twenty five. I think who won it there? I forgot, but it was twenty two thousand dollars for winning. Have a go, just go. So, oh, was that the, was that the short answer or the? <laughs> Nah, anyway, <laughs> Next we, we like we like seeing you in Athens too. Who, that was fun. Who is your favorite racer to watch? Who's the most exciting guy? Who do you look on the start list and think awesome is here? Oh, oh God, that, there's no way. I mean, because you guys all, I'll, I'll give you an example. Come on, I this study. One. I study riders, and Twilight crits are so dark that instead of seeing faces and jerseys, I look at riding style. You know, like one one rider that that that. that really kind of got me to study riders and you guys may or may not know him Clay, you may know him is a uh, trent wilson when he raced for jittery joe's he had this style that you could see that was different than everybody else the way he rode and i started studying and i'm going oh that's trent and then i noticed the guy next to him was like mm. like Aldo, i know his style clay i know your style em still kind of learned about yours ryan i know yours i, I just i could tell from 200 meters who is coming just based on not face not kit I kid a little bit because that gives away, but it's the style that we that we you guys ride the bicycle. I will give you a hard time though because you did mix up Brandon and I a couple times at at uh, Speed Week, and I heard that Ryan was on the front a couple times when he was sitting right next to me halfway it. back. I, but I, I was I, just, I was I announced just, three times throughout the field. It was great. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Go ahead and bust my balls. What do I care? I'm in North Carolina. <laughs> No, no, it's great for me. It's uh, I'm, Ryan's on the front. Yeah, you're great. I'm still up there. You know, I I I, I should appear collegiately. I've known this kid Nolan Tankersley forever since he was like this tall, and I tweeted out that he won the race, but it's autocorrected to Noah and East Tennessee State. Autocorrected because I typed stage so much to East Tennessee stage, and then I got killed on Twitter, and I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to help here. So, they know nobody hugged you after the start of that race or after the finish of that race then either. No, that's the first time I've ever gotten after a professional bike race. <laughs> You're welcome. Dear. Dear. <laughs> All right, boys. Anything else that I should do? Hey, man, I'm 50 years old. I got to start watching heavy Beverly Hillbillies or something. Yeah, you better go stretch. Is it true that you were a... Um, Flight attendant before this? Is that true? That's true. Uh, I can see on a flight. I can yeah. see that. Who'd you who'd you fly with? Uh, Piedmont, then US Airways. Okay. I'm not kidding. Is it true that what happens above ten thousand feet stays up there? <laughs> yeah, the plane. It stays up in the air after ten thousand feet. <laughs> I was you're, all that. you're definitely getting defensive here. <laughs> Caitlin, Cody, turn off the live stream now. <laughs> Those are my daughters. Oh, jeez, you guys. Um, any more questions about my background? Yes, I was a flight attendant for U.S. Airways, and it helped me build my business, which is Total Cyclist. I got to ride my bike. I'd take a trip to wherever, and I knew where the, the locations that had bikes, so I'd take a road bike and go ride 60 miles the first day and 30 the second day. And I was a male flight attendant, so I met my wife flying for U.S. Airways. Was she a flight attendant as well? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That was so creepy. That was creepy beyond belief. We might not uh, move on. Um, What's what's the next race you're doing? Um, Actually, I'm doing a, a hidden race that not many people know about, and I'm sure that I'm going to get blasted right now for um, 
saying it, but there's a Roanoke, there's a criterion in Roanoke, Virginia. He's going. Hey, Fifteen thousand dollars. And then after that, I go down to Winston Salem for that Everybody hole. told him like we're not gonna be there, but we're on the split. Yeah. No split. No, no we get the split. If you call him up, you get half. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Clay, you gotta win if I get half. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! All right, well, gents. Um, Thanks, man. Yep, we'll do it again down the road. I appreciate your time. Um, and this will be on YouTube, so it'll save so you guys can go back and live all the glory of being on this amazing show. Sweet. Sweet. Awesome. awesome. What's right. the name of the show? <laughs> We're still working on that. Okay. Cool. We'll get it. We got you. It's just a chit chat. Yeah, I mean, we're just having coffee or some other sugar. And I'm having my coffee. Oh, Red. A sponsored product. <laughs> oh, by the way, I just got texted. I am a giant a hole for telling everybody about that race. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. ass. Quoting it, isn't that your job? <laughs> while I've while I've got you, a good buddy of mine just uh, flicked a, the old text out to us. His name's uh, Adam Arson. He, <laughs> um, man, this is brutal. So uh, thanks, Adam. <laughs> it's brutal because he did his show last night and I couldn't tune in, tune in and give him hell. It's all right. It's not good either. Because that sucked last night too, I bet, Adam. Take that. I was on it. Yeah. <laughs> he was on a show. Were you in? Yeah, I was on it the other night. You killed it, I bet. Oh. I, I like Adam. Oh, <laughs> man, I am I tight. I have to tune. I have to get him on this. Whatever the name of this show is. Okay. Before, okay. Get, before, before this episode. escalates, we'll take it back to text messaging. We'll see what happens. <laughs> sort of Twitter war. <laughs> and I, I got no beast with anyone. Well, I lie. But... <laughs> well, Adam, now. <laughs> that, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gents. We listen. Um, travel safe home. Look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, down the road. Um, next, I see you guys probably, I don't know, when we meet again. Roanoke. Roanoke for my 50%. Yeah. All right, no splits, guys. Go run a mile. You ate 10 pounds of pizza, please. 50% of the Swanee split. <laughs> You're the Swanee, so. <laughs> All right. All right. You, come, sucker. You, know, you know how many Swannies we have? Five. I'm looking at them. <laughs> Zero. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Have a wonderful night. See you down the road. And uh, thanks for joining this show, whatever it is. The show. The show. The show. The show. Ooh. The show. Yeah. It's the show. All right, lads. Have a great night. All right, later. All right, later. <laughs>